Greetings, everyone. Today, I'll be presenting our paper titled Promoting Fairness Through Hyperparameter Optimization. The full version of this paper uh, is available at the archive link, and a short version appears in the workshop on responsible AI at iClear21. Starting with our motivation, in recent years, machine learning has had an increasingly pervasive impact in our daily lives. And at the same time, we've witnessed widespread reports of discrimination from some of these real world systems, from gender bias in CV screening tools to racial bias in recidivism assessment to gender bias in consumer lending or mortgage lending among numerous other examples. So there's a clear problem when blindly applying machine learning systems to some of these real world domains. And the literature is quite lacking in, in this behalf. The current landscape of fairness where ML still lacks practical methodologies and tools for real world practitioners. And current bias mitigation methods are often model or, model or metric dependent and invariably imply added complexity in machine learning pipelines, making it so they are seldom used in production live environments. But first, uh, let's take a short intermission to illustrate our problem through this plot. This is a plot of fairness versus predictive accuracy on a well-known um, data set from the fairness literature, the adult income data set. And from here, we can draw two key insights. First of all, there's a clear trade-off between fairness and accuracy. The most accurate metals, uh, methods are bound to have lower fairness and the fairer, the most fair models um, will have lower predictive accuracy. And this is one of the insights. And the second insight is that the trade-off is not linear. So with a short decrease in predictive accuracy, we can actually achieve steep increases in uh, the fairness metric. So to review, by optimizing solely for performance, we are unknowingly targeting unfair models, here marked with this red rectangle. And substantially fair models can be reached with small decreases in performance. So our objective is to find this model marked with a B, as well as all the other optimal balanced trade-offs between fairness and accuracy, as opposed to finding this model marked with an A that shows very low fairness. So our goals are to enable model development that achieves good fairness utility trade-offs. Our method should be easily introduced into current machine learning pipelines and be compatible with current business requirements. Our method should be model and metric agnostic, making it so there are no barriers to its widespread adoption. And we also aim to study the fairness utility trade-off in a real world setting. And how do we, do we aim to achieve this? Um, as the title of the talk indicates, we will integrate fairness awareness into the hyperparameterization process by guiding the search towards fair regions of our parameter space. So as a black box optimization method, it is both model and metric agnostic inherently. And importantly, this is already part of most real world ML pipelines. Most real world ML pipelines already have a hyperparameterization process. So there's a potential to introduce fairness at no extra cost or effort. And again, let's take a short intermission to scope out our project by defining what hyperparameters actually are. So when we talk about hyperparameters, we often think about model hyperparameters. These are the number of estimators in a random forest or the learning rate and number of layers uh, in a neural network, among others. But actually, the model type itself is also a hyperparameter. So whether we want to use a random forest or a neural network like GBM or any other model type, this is a categorical hyperparameter. And also, there are sampling hyperparameters. For instance, whether we, we want to use undersampling, oversampling, and to which degree, these are all hyperparameters. These are all decisions available to the data scientists. 
and all of these decisions all of these decisions will influence the end performance of the model the end predictive accuracy of the model but importantly they will also influence the model's fairness bias can be introduced by any of these decisions and this is the space that we're acting on now let's take a, a brief look at the literature of algorithmic fairness and first we have to define it algorithmic bias is often defined as disparate error rates error rates among individuals from different subgroups so if we take a hypothetical case of um, a machine learning powered social security program an assistive program it should successfully find individuals in need of assistance these are true positives in equal ratios among different ethnicities or genders that is it should not spend its whole assistive budget on individuals from a given ethnicity or a given gender it should be proportionately distributed this translates into equal true positive rates and bias reduction techniques essentially attempt to balance these error rates regarding fairness metrics popular notions include equalized odds which dictates equal true positive rates and equal false positive rates equal opportunity is a relaxation of equalized odds that dictates only equal true positive rates which is the metric that we saw on our hypothetical social security program um, this essentially dictates that the likelihood of a positive prediction conditioned on having a positive label and belonging to the underprivileged group should be equal to the likelihood of a positive prediction conditioned on having a positive lab label and belonging to the privileged group so the like so the likelihood of a positive prediction given that you have a positive label should be independent of which group you belong to and in essence any aggregate of a group-based metric can be used to define fairness and it is highly task dependent regarding bias mitigation algorithms these are often divided into three families pre-processing in processing and post-processing algorithms pre-processing algorithms attempt to correct the biases in the input data itself fed to the model such that ideally any model that would be learned on that corrected data would not show bias in processing algorithms on the other hand attempt to correct biases in the learning process itself common examples are regularization or constraint optimization and post-processing algorithms attempt to correct the biases in the output of an already trained model and a common example is that of threshold calibration however pre-processing methods by acting in the beginning of the ml of the ml pipeline cannot guarantee fairness in the end model bias is corrected in the beginning of the ml pipeline but um, we are not guaranteeing that after all the steps have been taken bias has not re-emerged in the end in processing methods are either metric dependent or model dependent and often non-existent for for numerous algorithms for instance like gbm and post-processing methods are arguably inherently suboptimal because they act on an already trained model after a biased model is trained they attempt to correct its outputs additionally they require inference time access to sensitive attributes unlike most in processing and pre-processing algorithms overall all methods invariably introduce complexity to real world ml pipelines making it difficult to achieve widespread adoption so moving on to our solution our methodology we propose to essentially we task this problem we cast this problem as a multi-objective optimization problem in which we propose to optimize simultaneously optimize uh, a predictive accuracy metric and a fairness metric over the hyperparameter space lambda a common way of tackling this multi-objective problem is by scalarizing this function uh, a common scalarization function is the weight lp norm here h is a function from the hyperparameter space lambda to rn 
we would scalarize it back to R and optimize that scalarized function. These are three plots of the friend security trade-off on three real-world data sets that we'll see further ahead. And one key insight that we can draw from here is that actually the friend security trade-off is often convex. This is useful to us because running multi-object optimization on a convex Pareto frontier is much easier. So, and this is uh, prominently the case of the first data set that we saw as well. So the adult data set is obviously um, convex as well. The Pareto frontier. Uh, and this essentially enables us to use uh, an L1 norm or an L norm with the low P, uh, which achieves uh, much faster convergence while carrying equal guarantees as the Chebyshev norm for convex problems. So we're optimizing the L1 of our previous um, optimization metric G with by this alpha parameter, which is the relative importance of the accuracy metric. We will apply this methodology to three popular hyperparameter tuners. First of all, we'll apply it to random search which is um, the most flexible tuner and makes the least assumptions and one of the most widely used. We'll also apply it to the tree parts and estimator, which is uh, a base optimization tuner uh, put forth by Bergstra et al, which essentially improves convergence speed uh, when compared to random search. And we'll also apply it to hyperband, which is a bandit-based algorithm uh, put forth by Lee et al, that shows strong anytime performance, is budget aware, and uh, importantly shows uh, can be trivially parallelized, is not executed in a sequential, sequential manner. Hyperband is actually built on another tuner, which is successive halving. And both of these tuners rely on um, a simple but powerful hypothesis. Um, which is relying on low fidelity estimates of a model's performance. So they essentially randomly sample n hyperparameter configurations. They train them on a fraction of the total budget, in this case, 12.5%, uh, and use this as an estimate of that model's performance. They will discard the worst half and double the budget for the remaining ones. Discard the worst half, double the budget until a single configuration remains. So essentially what we're proposing is a fair random search, fair TP, and fair band. Fairness aware variants of these popular tuners. Additionally, aiming for a completely out of the box experiment uh, experience, we will also propose, we're also proposing a heuristic for automatically setting these values of alpha. And our objectives are twofold. So alpha is the is the relative importance of performance in our optimization metric. And if we use a static value of alpha, we'll be targeting a specific value, a specific trade-off between fairness and accuracy, which is all right, but um, our objectives are twofold when proposing this heuristic, which is, first of all, we're eliminating a hyperparameter from our hyperparameter tuner. And secondly, uh, we aim to promote a wider exploration of the Pareto frontier instead of targeting a single trade-off. And this is, uh, the heuristic for setting the alpha values. Further details can be found in the paper. But essentially what we're doing is when the models seen so far show um, very high fairness, but low performance, low accuracy, we use a higher alpha to promote accuracy. When the models have high fairness, high performance, but low fairness, we use a lower alpha to promote uh, performance or accuracy. And this is the pseudocode for FB auto. So we propose Fairband, and the version of Fairband that employs this heuristic uh, is dubbed FB auto. Uh, it is similar to Fairband, which is similar to Hyperband. The main difference being that uh, the alpha value is computed at each successive halving iteration and each bracket independently. And 
um, we'll apply this methodology to our case study, our real world case study at FITZAI. And a couple of points on this case study it is that uh, we have uh, multiple business requirements as any, as any company does. So malls must comply with predetermined business requirements. For instance, the use of specific state-of-the-art methods, such as deep learning or some or uh, um, some other more interpretable uh, machine learning method, such as decision trees, and also latency requirements. So any method that we devise must output a model that still complies with these requirements. And Fransoware HO emerges as an answer to this uh, to this formulation. It provides finer control over which model is put into production because it is completely model agnostic and it carries no extra trainer evaluation time penalty, allowing us to keep up with the latency constraints. Moving on to our experimental setup, we will apply this methodology to a real world account opening fraud case study. Fidzai as a company has multiple major clients and our objective is to fight financial fraud with uh, machine learning systems. So with that in mind, we have a real world case study of account opening fraud. Account opening fraud is when fraudsters gain illicit access to a credit line from a newly opened bank account. A fraud detection system should deny suspicious account openings and whichever account openings are not caught by the fraud detection system will be losses incurred by the bank. At the same time, holding a bank account has been deemed a basic right in the EU and we think it should be deemed a basic right um, in the whole world because it provides a vital service. But these two points are in, are in conflict because if we're denying suspicious account openings, uh, sometimes uh, they'll be right, sometimes they'll be wrong. When they are wrong, they are false positives. So we'll be um, denying legitimate individuals access to a bank account, which is a basic right. So what we have to guarantee is that these false positives do not hit particular groups the hardest. So our fairness metric will actually be um, our fairness target will actually be that individuals from different age groups, we could use any uh, other protected subgroup, should not be disproportionately hit by false positives. A false positive is a legitimate individual that is unjustly denied vital banking services. The fairness metric will be the ratio between group-wise false positive rates, and the performance metric will be recall at 5% false positive rates. We'll also be applying our methodology to three literature benchmark data sets, uh, Compass, Adult Income, and Donor's Shoes, uh, and further details are in the annex of the paper. Regarding the search space, we include the model type as a hyperparameter. We include more specific hyperparameters, uh, numerous more specific hyperparameters, including dropout or the maximum tree depth from a light GBM model, et cetera. And we also include undersampling hyperparameters. So which percentage of positive samples should we include in the data set? And this is used because in our case study, uh, the data set is quite class imbalanced. Finally, let's take a look at the results. This is the final table of the average result over 15 runs for each tuner. Uh, and as we can see, Fairness aware tuners can actually increase fairness by often by more than double, by, uh, more than doubling the fairness of their, of their fairness blind counterparts. And the costs in predictive accuracy are quite small. So for fair TPE, the increase is 137% in fairness while decreasing 14% in predictive accuracy. And for FB auto, which is arguably a better trade off. Uh, the increase in fairness is again more than double, 111% plus, but the decrease in predictive accuracy is only 6%. And from a more uh, practical standpoint, the model selected by FB Auto, the model selected by FB Auto, when compared to uh, the fairness blind counterpart, which is Hyperband, these models actually accept 411 more 
bank accounts from legitimate older age individuals. So these are 411 legitimate older age individuals that would not have access to a bank account um, has we optimized only for performance. And again, the results on the literature benchmarks um, follow the same trends and the results are visible in the annex of the paper. This is a plot of the trade-off for each of the 15 runs. And as we can see, the fairness blind uh, algorithms here uh, in a lighter tone um, consistently achieve very good performance, but very low fairness. And our objective is to hit good trade-offs. So trade-offs in the Pareto frontier of fairness versus accuracy with a better fairness than, than the fairness blind counterparts. And as we can see, we can successfully find these trade-offs. So FB Auto, for instance, uh, here in darker blue, can consistently find malls at the Pareto frontier or very near to the Pareto frontier, which is our objective. And as a final experiment, we included another model type that wasn't included initially, which is this EG, uh, which is an in-processing bias reduction um, method. And by including this EG, we were trying to figure out if our uh, models found by hyperparameterization were actually better or were actually better trade-offs than uh, a state-of-the-art in-processing method. And what we found is that actually um, in this case study, they most definitely are. So uh, we ran FB Auto over this, this data, Fairband Auto, and the selected models are actually all light GBMs, trained in a fairness blind manner, but achieving excellent fairness utility trade-offs. And a, a single Pareto efficient EG model is found uh, here. And this trend is visible as well on the adult income data set. So to conclude, by optimizing solely for performance, you are unknowingly targeting unfair models. Fairness aware hyperoptimization is an efficient model and metric agnostic method for optimizing the fairness security trade-off. We also propose a dynamic method of assigning the fairness utility weight, uh, a heuristic for assigning this weight. We show state-of-the-art results, significantly improved fairness at a small performance cost and no extra budget. And importantly, we show that hyperoptimization is an effective and efficient way to navigate the fairness utility trade-off. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to answer any questions via email. And these links point to the short paper and the full preprint. Thank you.